Hey everyone, welcome to episode 20 of Sifted HQ. That's a big milestone for a show like this. Not a big deal when you just blather on camera about video games and then just compress it and post it. There's a lot of production that goes into Sifted HQ, so this is a big deal for us. Big thanks to Mitch, big thanks to you guys for supporting the show. Um, hope you guys enjoy the 20th, let's go. The battle royale genre keeps exploding and big players are getting into the game. The latest is Ubisoft with Hyperscape, a vertical last trio standing competitive shooter that throws more than a couple wrinkles into the formula. And so we're here to help you take the golden crown with our survival guide. Hyperscape has several elements that differentiate it from its competitors, but the most obvious is its traversal. The speed and verticality provide a lot of opportunity to get creative, so make sure you're always on the move. Use your abilities and the jump pads to make targeting difficult and never ever stand still. You'll be a sitting duck waiting for someone to rain down a powerful flam or snipe you from a rooftop. <laughs> Next, make sure to upgrade your mods and weapons as fast as possible. It's simple to do. You just collect more of the same thing until you reach the level 4 cap. Level 1 weapons are only effective if you're targeting soft spots and landing shots in specific locations can be a challenge. To put in perspective, a maxed out sniper rifle is practically a one-shot kill regardless of where the bullet lands. Early on, avoid skirmishes and take the time to hop from one building to the next and upgrade everything. Sectors will soon be collapsing. Finding good weapons in a battle royale game is always tricky, but in Hyperscape, they're almost always found in any major landmark. The bigger the building, the more likely there are weapons with serious stopping power inside. Sometimes you'll even get multiple versions of the same gun for some upgrade action. This strategy is a little riskier because you're not the only player aware of this fact, so be quick and run through the building collecting things before the firefight breaks out. Also, if you find a golden handgun, pick it up. It's already fully upgraded and more powerful than any long rifle you have. Now that's the hack! Another one of Hyperscape's major differentiators is how death and revives are handled. When you die, the match isn't over. You become a ghost and can move around the map pinging enemies, weapons, and mods so your teammates know where they are. It's invaluable, and something that it might eventually be patched out, but make use of it while it lasts. Once you've decided on a revival pad you want to use, make sure to ping it. It will help your teammates find you and get you back into battle. While you wait at the pad, make sure to ping any enemies nearby so your teammates don't get an unpleasant surprise when trying to help. Our final tip is when you get to the crown showdown and there are only two teams remaining. Don't be the first to take the crown. It gives away your position to the enemy. Let the other team take it and then form an attack strategy. When you're ready, take out at least one member of the enemy team before trying to capture the crown yourself. You may feel like a fish out of water when you first play Hyperscape, but with these tips, you'll be zipping around Neo Arcadia and taking the crown in no time. It's been slow as crap in the gaming industry this week, but that won't stop us. We're still here to deliver the six biggest news stories in gaming for the week ending July 14th, 2020. I'm Shane Satterfield, and this is The Big Six. It's been a terrible couple weeks for Ubisoft. A ton of its executives have been accused of sexual harassment or worse, but you'd never know it if you watched its E3 replacement event on Sunday. While the publisher debuted Far Cry 6 and announced release dates for Assassin's Creed Valhalla on November 17th and Watch Dogs Legion on October 29th, it completely ignored its internal issues and failed to make a statement. To its credit, Ubisoft has fired most of the executives involved. However, it's missed an opportunity to make a statement to the industry. Backwards compatibility is quickly becoming a battleground for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. This is one area where Xbox definitely has the advantage and is looking to make sure it stays that way. Microsoft has decided to block publishers from charging extra money to upgrade from an Xbox One version of a game to an Xbox Series X version. Instead, the upgrade must be free either through Xbox's smart delivery service or their own system. Backward compatibility has never moved the needle in a console war before, but perhaps this time is different. 
All the E3 replacement events are beginning to wind down. And if our internal polling is any indication, you're ready for the real thing to return. Well, I have good news for you. The ESA announced this week that the real E3 will definitely be returning to Los Angeles in 2021. It will be different from what we're used to with the show, but most agree that it was in need of a makeover anyway. It appears that E3 is yet another case of don't know what you got till it's gone. Sega definitely knows what it's got with its classic game lineup and it's resulting in yet another micro console. This one's called the Sega Astro City Mini. It's shaped like an arcade machine because it's loaded with over 30 of Sega's arcade classics. And best of all, some of these games are actually 3D. There's been no word of a Western release just yet. We're always desperate for PlayStation 5 news, but I feel like this week, we hit rock bottom. The box art for PlayStation 5 games has been revealed, and it was one of the most commented stories on Sifted for the past seven days. The boxes feature a good bit of white, which makes them look kind of Japanese. The cases themselves remain blue, like PlayStation 4 cases. I think we've all spent a little bit more money than we had anticipated on video games in 2020, but one man went completely overboard. An anonymous auction bidder spent a staggering $114,000 on a sealed copy of Super Mario Bros. for the NES. It's the most anyone has ever paid for a video game, well, since 2019, when another copy went for $100,000. These cartridges from 1985 are more valuable because they have what's called hang tabs, which were a part of packaging before Nintendo moved to shrink wrap. If you have a sealed copy of this game lying around with hang tags, congratulations, you just hit the lottery. All right, that's it for the big six, the six biggest news stories in gaming for the week ending July 14th, 2020. I'm Shane Satterfield for Sifted News, and I'll be back next week. Turned Up Tuesday gives you the best games, albums, movies, and TV show releases of the week, and we're back for another entry. Big games are coming to PS4 and Switch this week, while Xbox leans on its partners. A new multiplayer 2D fighter called Bounty Battle is set to release on Thursday. The Smash Bros for indie characters include appearances from Guacamele, Dead Cells, Owlboy, and a whole lot more. It's coming to every major platform including Mac and Linux. Paper Mario The Origami King for Switch went from announced to released in just two months. King Ollie seeks to conquer Mario's paper world by turning it into origami. He has taken control of Peach's castle and Bowser's army, so it's up to Mario to save the day. Using his unique arms to reveal secrets and a turntable to battle baddies makes this more of an action adventure than an RPG. But we're in another Switch drought, so pony up on Friday. Sony's final first party PlayStation 4 game is here. The wait is over and Ghost of Tsushima launches on Friday. This open-world action RPG follows the Mongolian invasion of the island of Tsushima. You play as Jin who seeks to take back his land, switching between his roles as an honorable samurai and the stealth-happy ghost. It's already shown an acute attention to detail, and we expect much more from the full game. Coming from the excellent Sucker Punch, it's about as safe as a purchase you can make. Ghost of Tsushima looks like a massive game, so you're going to need some tunes to keep you company, and we've got plenty. UK grunge band Bush has been around for almost 30 years at this point. It doesn't tend to stay in one genre, and its eighth album is its heaviest yet. It's enough to keep our metal streak going at least. Turn it up and slash some mongols on Friday. Ellie Goulding is quite beautiful, and she's just as talented. Her fourth studio album, Brightest Blue, launches on Friday, and it's sure to get her more radio play. The new songs are much more poppy and much more electronic, but if you listen to the lyrics, her dour perspective hasn't changed one bit. Here's the one that won't offend anyone else in the house. On the flip side, if you're looking to rev up the place, there's no better album than Kornicke's self-titled debut. Frontman Ian Mukai was the former lead singer and guitarist for Minor Threat and Fugazi. His new band sounds familiar, as Fugazi's former bass player has joined the lineup. Fugazi broke up almost 20 years ago, and this is as close as you're gonna get. Buy it now. 
If you're looking for something in the middle, Surfer Blood's new album, Carefree Theater, releases on Friday. This band has been remixed by some of the biggest producers in the world because of its excellent songwriting. This carries over into the new release, as it's a collection of catchy and quirky earworms that will leave you humming along long after it's turned off. As the backlogs of old episodes and projects dwindle, new movies and TV shows are hard to come by. If you have been enjoying Snowpiercer on TNT, then you should check out the alienist Angel of Darkness. Returning for its second season, this late 19th century crime drama stars Dakota Fanning, Daniel Bruhl, and Luke Evans. They're in a search for a dangerous elusive killer, but they shine light on issues like corruption, income equality, and gender roles along the way. It premieres on TNT Sunday, so there's time to catch up before season two. Hey everyone, welcome to Closet Raiders, where I share some of the coolest stuff I've collected in my 20 plus years in the gaming industry. Today, we're going to Naughty Dog Land, and I have what I've heard several people say is the holy grail of Naughty Dog collectibles. Now you're looking, you're saying, Shane, it's just an old book sitting there. It's really not an old book. It is the Fortune Hunter edition of Uncharted 2. Um, there were 200 of these made total, um, and most were sent to the press. Uh, and there were a few that they gave out to contest winners, but there are 200 of these in the entire world. Um, and it looks like it's a big book, but it's really not. It's a, it's a fake book that has a bunch of cool stuff inside it. And I'm gonna show it to you right now. So let's open it up. And here really is the coup de grace because this is signed by the entire team that made the game. And I'll move that page so you can catch the ink there on it. Signed by everyone. So first of all, 200 of these. Second of all, signed by the entire team. I don't know how many of those there are. I'm guessing maybe 100. Um, these were sent to all the EICs uh, back when the game was released. And there's probably around 100 of those back then roughly. So probably half of them. Uh, were given out to EICs. The other half were probably given to the team or to people who won contests for Naughty Dog. Anyway, well, let's open this thing up. So they said signed here. And then there are several pages of lore talking about the characters in the game, setting up the plot in the game. Um, and then obviously just a lot of really cool concept art from Naughty Dog's artists. And then you finally get past this section and you get to the goodies. So inside here, I have the official soundtrack, the OST for Uncharted 2. Um, here's a little promotional unit just for the Fortune Hunter edition. Uh, this also has like exclusive uh, digital content that came with it. However, I have never opened this. Everything is just as it was when I got it. There's a brand new sealed copy of the game in here. And again, the version of the game is different. Um, there's codes and stuff that you get with this version of the game. And then here's what people really like. And this is a replica of the Ferba dagger from Uncharted, obviously. Um, this is a piece that you can put on your desk and kind of use it as a paperweight if you want. However, it has never been removed from this box and I'm not gonna be the one to do it right now. So um, other than that, this is all fake. There aren't really pages. It looks like it. You can, I like too how uh, the cover is curled up like it's old and aged. That was like that when I got it. Um, and you can see they just, the page motif goes all the way around. So anyway, there you go. Only 200 in the world. Um, Uncharted 2 Fortune Hunter edition, um, signed by the entire team at Naughty Dog. Ubisoft had a big event this week, and its marquee game announcement was leaked beforehand. At least it made the cut for this week's noobs. Far Cry 6 is the only real big announcement from Ubisoft, and its trailer leaked the day before the event. That the game exists isn't all that shocking, but Breaking Bad's Giancarlo Esposito starting as the villain sure is. He's the father of Voss from Far Cry 3, 
and he definitely knows the definition of insanity. This time, you'll be able to choose your gender, shoot it out in a major city, and recruit allies to fight alongside you. It's coming February 28th, 2021 for all major platforms plus next gen. That's pretty soon, so much more information is right around the bend. Games like Gravity Rush show that physics can be a great tool for developers. Sky Beneath is a narrative puzzle platformer that perpetuates that theory. You control the direction of gravity while scavenging abandoned mine facilities. It's like Tomb Raider and the Talos Principle had a baby, and it's coming to all major current gen platforms sometime in 2021. The Crash Bandicoot franchise has quickly turned into a cash cow for Activision. It's throwing another log onto the fire with the marsupial's first mobile release called On The Run. Like a lot of mobile games, this endless runner is big on character customization, but there are also some new weapons to fiddle with. It releases in full this fall, and you can sign up now for iOS or Android. Developer Spiders is known for B-level sci-fi action RPGs like Technomancer, but it's stepping out of its comfort zone with Steel Rising. Well, kind of. It's set during the French Revolution, except King Louis has robots. That's all we know for now, aside from its release date sometime in 2021. All right, that's it for Sifted HQ episode 20. Again, a big milestone for Sifted to get to the 20th episode of a show like this. People simply just aren't doing shows like this in gaming coverage anymore. So I'm very proud of what we have accomplished. I hope that you guys enjoy the show. Here's to many more. We'll see you next week. Thank you.